Hi everyone, this is Jito from Jitsu.com and this time we'll look at the a priori algorithm. Uh, this is part of the data mining uh, video series, uh, especially the frequent pattern mining. And I will not discuss much about the algorithm itself, but this video will focus more on how exactly the, the algorithm works and trying to do the algorithm step by step. All right, so as you can see here, I uh, already listed the, the template for the step that we will follow. And I hope this one be a very long video. Uh, so, well, let's get started. The, well, one, one thing is the, the, the data set example is from the textbook, uh, the data mining concept and techniques. This is a, the second edition. And it's you can find it on page two hundred thirty six. So if you have the textbook, you can check it out also. Let's get started. All right, so we have this data set D, and it has uh, nine transactions, and these are the for these are the items that belongs to each transaction, and we will have at least two definitions here. First, the C K and K is the item set candidates. Number C is for the candidates, and L sub K is the frequent K item set. You know that is the candidates that with support count greater than or equal to minimum support count. Um, we might want to review these uh, definitions uh, by yourself. But and anyway, we will we'll, uh, we'll see this two terms over and over again during the, the algorithm. Okay, so I, I freeze the data set so it's easy to see. Now let's let's just do the step one first. I'll just cut this and put it here. Okay, so first we'll scan all of the transactions to count the number of occurrences of each item. So that means we'll have, and this is for C1, so there's only one item set uh, in every set. So we have I1. Oops, something wrong with this. Yeah, that's alright. Item 1. Hold on a second, let me just quickly change the font. There you go. So we have the I1 and I2, I3. I4 and I5. Oop. Five. Yep. And so these are the different unique uh, items that we have in the data set, as you can see. So we look at how many I1s are, I mean, how many times I1 occurs in all of these nine transactions. So we can count it quickly. We have one, two, three, four. Five and six, so we have six support count of the item one. Sorry, I mean the I one. Well, I stands for item, and I two. Let's see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have seven occurrence of the I two and I three. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. We have six here. Let me check if it's recording. Yes, it is. And I4, we have one, two, three, one, two. Okay, there are only two. And I5, we have one and two. All right, so we have this uh, C1 set. Now, uh, we will we'll go to the second step that cut quickly from here so we're done with the se step one good so we need to determine the L1 that's a set of frequent one item set what that means is we check if uh, okay oh I'm sorry I forgot to set our minimum count minimum support count so let's say our minimum minimum support count is two that's the example that we have so 
we can see quickly that all of the uh, C1 has minimum support, has super count of two or greater. So our L1 is exactly the same as the C1. Let's just quickly copy this. Uh, that's not how I want it. So let's make it big. Nope. Oh, we go. And let's copy the. What's wrong? Yes. All right. So since every every item has a super count of two or greater, then L1 is exactly the same as the C1. So far, so good. So we'll proceed to the step three now. Cut, paste. And what we're going to do in step three is that we generate C2, you know, a candidate with two item set, and we'll scan D for the support count. Let's just quickly copy. Nope, I just want this too. So this is going to be our C2. And first we find the candidates. So pretty much we do the combination. So we have I1 and I2. I1, whoop, I1 and I3. I1 and I4. I1 and I5. You can see what I'm doing here is pretty much getting the all the combinations in which the other doesn't matter. 2, I2 and I4, I2 and I5, then we have I3 and I4, I3 and I5, I4 and I5. Hope this part is not well, uh, doesn't confuse you yet, so this, this is pretty straightforward. We just get combinations out of these five items, and we have this 3, 4, 5, 6, 10. I guess it's 10, yes. There are 10 combinations. And now we will check the support count for each of these item sets. So, so we can see how many times item I1 and I2 occur in the data set D. So I1, I2, we have 1. And we have two, we have three and four. So we have four support count and one next is I1 and I3. I1 and I3, one, two, three, four. And I1 and I4. I1, one, only one. I1 and I5, we have one, two. I2 and I3, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. I2 and I4, we have 1 and 2. I2 and I5, we have 1 and 2. I3 and I4, we have 1. Oh, we don't have any I2 and I4. And I3 and I5, we have one, only one, and I4 and I5, I don't see any, so it's zero. Okay, so this is uh, the candidate C2. And, and now we will, after we scan this, we'll, we, as you can see, um, not every item set has you know, support, support count of two. So that's what we're gonna do in step four is that we will remove so we, we will we'll determine L2 right the, the set of frequent you know the two item item set is frequent so out of this let me just whoop, just need to copy this paste okay and it's going to be up so as you can see our L2 is derived from the C2 Um, but since our uh, minimum support count is 2, I'll just put it here, so it will still stay there. So we will remove all the rows that has support count 
lesser than 2. In this case, we will remove i1 and i4, enter the row, and we'll remove i3, i4. All these the last three rows will just delete them. Okay, so we have six um, item set of, I mean, two item sets in the L2. Um, we'll, we'll proceed to this step five now. Uh, you know, you probably say, yeah, this is boring, Jit. I mean, what's so hard about this? Well, it's, it's not yet the fun part. You, you see this term prune? This is where it starts, it begins to be fun. <laughs> well, at least for me. Okay, so in step five, we can see, you know, we need to generate C3. Three items at candidates and prune. Okay, I haven't really mentioned about this prune, but let's 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 try to find the C three for now. So we have C three, C three. So uh, we'll, as you can guess, we'll make an item set uh, with three items. So it's going to be I one. But remember that this will uh, be from the item set. Uh, that we got from the L2. Okay, so so it's not from the data set D directly, but it's from the L2. So as you can see, oh, this is a bit hard. Let's see if I could. I'll just make this here first for a second, and we'll we'll move it down there later. Okay, so we have I1, I2. If you combine this all together with I1 and I3, we can have I1, I2, I3, and we also have I1, I2, and I5, I, I just, and we have other, we have, we can have I1, I3, and I5, um, and we, okay, I think we're done with this three, and for the next one, we can have I2, I3, and I4, I3 and I4, and then we have I2, I3, and I5, I5, and then last one I guess it's I2, I4, and I5. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so so now, what? Just put it back here. Another, okay. Now, looks good, right? Okay, so yeah, we have six, but what? So what does prune means? Prune means is because because we have this uh, a priori property that I will just quickly write here. <laughs> property that it says all subsets of a uh, Frequent item set must also be frequent. What does that mean? What um, so it means that so out of these three item sets, you know, I one and I two, you know, this this, this the subset of this I one, I two, and I three is I one and I two, I one and I three, and I two and I three, right? So uh, the subset must be also frequent. So if the subset of this, and we determine this by looking at the the C two. If if the subset is not frequent, like such as yeah, so suppose this is the one with a subset, and then then that um, item set shouldn't be there. That's that's what it means by pruning. Let's let's take a look at how it works. All right, so the subset of this is I one. I I two and I one and I three and I two and I three. Okay. Now, if if we can see, I'll, I'll I think I'll just probably just copy this down there so so we can easily check. See. Um, so I1 and I2, okay, it's there. I, oh, probably, no, no, no. 
Yeah, I guess. Sorry for this. I'll, I'll just rather use the else to, to make it um, more simple. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we'll check it with the with the L2. So I1 and I2 is there, so it's fine. I1 and I3 is there, it's fine. And I2 and I3 is there, it's fine. So so this this item set is okay. I just put V. <laughs> so this item set is is safe. Let's check at I1, I2, and I5. So we have the subset of I1 and I2. I1 and I5 and I2 and I5. We will see again that I1 and I2 of course it's there, it's the same, so so it's okay. I1 and I5 we can see yes it's there. I2 and I5 it's there. So again this is okay. But let's check about this I I1, I3 and I5. So we have I1, I3 and I oh, Sorry, I1 and I3, I1 and I5, I3 and I5. Okay, so I1 and I3, yes, it's there. I1 and I5, yes, it's there. But I3 and I5, whoa, it's not anywhere in our L2. So this is not a candidate. And if you, I will, I will Okay, uh, I was thinking of actually skipping this, but, but let's not do it for now. So it's easier to understand. So uh, let's let's check out of the rest the, the, the rest of the three I, I, uh, item set are they do, do they satisfy this a priori property? And I'll just quickly fix that one. Cool. Okay, so it's I2 i3, i2, i4, i3, and i4, and i2, i3, i2, i5, i3, i5, i2, i4, I2 and I5, I4 and I5. Okay, so let's check these uh, three item sets. Are, we, are they going to stay or should we prune them? So I2 and I3, okay, it's there. I2 and I4, yes, it's there. I3 and I4, no, it's not. So it's not going to be there. I2, for, we proceed to the next one. I2, I3 and I5. I2, I3, yes, it's okay. I2 and I5, yes, it's there. I3 and I5, it's not there. So again, we'll remove it. And for the last item set, we have I2, I4. Yes, it's there. I2 and I5, yes. I4 and I5, nope, it's not. So so we actually, our C3 will only contain this this 2. Or this is not support count, you, you know this, right? <laughs> I'm sorry to put this there, but yeah. So, um, so our C3, you know, this is the real C3, so this is like the, the process of getting C3, will actually have this two item set, that is I1, I2, and I3, and I1, I2, and I5. Okay, that's, that's what we mean by pruning. Okay, and so we will uh, count this, okay, it's just, yeah, exactly. So we'll find the so we, we have pruned the uh, the item set now, and we'll let's find the support count of C3. So I1, I2, and I3, let's take a look at data set D again. I1, I2, I3 is 1, 2, there are 2 support count for the item set, and then I1, I2, and I5, we have 1 and 2. Okay. So this is this this is our C three and this is the support count, and since okay uh, as you can probably uh, predict from you know guess from the what is the next step it will uh, determine the L three we will uh, keep all of the, 
the two item set because they all satisfy uh, this minimum support count. So I'll just quick change to L3. L is supposed to be another subscript. Okay, so the L3, what this means is that the L3 are exactly the same with C3 because there are only two and both of them have a support count greater than two or, or equal. All right, so we, we're done with step seven. We'll, we'll proceed to the last step, well, at least for this data set. So this is, as you notice, probably you, we will continue doing this until until the C, the CK is null. All right, and in, in this case, we'll, it will happen on this uh, four item set when K is equal to four. So, okay, back to the item set. Hold on a second, just need to copy this. Where the K is equal to four. Okay, so from this um, item set, we can generate only one um, four item set candidate. So Y1, I2, and I3, I5. If you notice that this is the only possible combination, um, considering the order is not, it's not important. So, uh, we, okay, so before we determine the support count, uh, we will need to prune this. So we'll do the prune. So what is the combination? I'll just put it here. What is the, uh, the combination of the subset of this um, item set? It's I1 and I2 and I3. Um, I1, I2, I5. I two ooh, I one two I three I five Okay this is probably the only three combinations there's three, three uh item set combination subset of this item set. So I one, I two and I three we will compare it with the L three. Uh it's there so it's fine. I one I uh, I'm sorry. I one I two and five yes it's also there it's fine but unfortunately we don't have I two I three and I five so uh, this one and only candidate will get pruned and so our C four is null well it becomes null so it's you know it's it's empty because the only one uh, candidate gets pruned. And then when it is C4 equals a null, then the algorithm stops. And we have then have the frequent item sets that we want, and what are those? Those are this uh, contained in the L. So the L3, L2, and L1, as you can see, they all um, satisfy the minimum support count of 2. Okay, so, so that's how we do the uh, a priori algorithm, and as I've said earlier, uh, I will not, I, I'm not, I, this this video focus on about how the steps are, and you might want to review the the other sort of resource about the details uh, or the definitions that that we use in this um, tutorial. Okay, everyone, uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.